archiving started. Oh, hello, colleagues. Um, I've I've had this great, quick, easy way to to tally up the attendance a student has in your class using the attendance manager, and I started typing up instructions and realized that they were a little bit cumbersome. So I thought a quick archive and then post it out as an MP4 would be a great way for you guys to to view it and be able to to efficiently accomplish this task. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and begin a, a share, and I'll show you what uh, I'm referring to. And hopefully uh, this will be very helpful for you and uh, and quick. That That is the key. So we're going to go ahead and grab application share. Already set, should be going. And what you're looking at is my management console in uh, the biology class. And this uh, process works best with a downloaded CSV from the attendance manager rather than from the report function. So if you're in a habit of running the report functions, it will work. This particular system will work more efficiently if you use the attendance manager. Um, if you are one of those people who does use the report function because it has different um, reports that or different functions that come out of it, that's fine. I can show you how to kind of tweak it or you'd probably be able to figure that out on your own. But if you're not familiar with that, if you um, open the attendance manager, you'll see that there is an export button there. And if you click the export button, it will give a pop-up that will ask you, uh, and it defaults to a TSV, but you want a CSV file. So download that, and once it's done, you get a file that looks like this, which has all your students and the days that they were in class, and then there's a status report, which is generally just when they were present. If you want to keep track of the absences, the tardies, the holidays, those types of things uh, for, for grading purposes, then this will be a little bit more cumbersome for you, but it'll still be easier than doing it by hand. So once you have this screen, um, I personally like to change the date and format this cell to um, something that is a little bit more user friendly. So I go ahead and add it in by the actual days of the week and the dates. Uh, I think that's just a little more user friendly for me. Uh, this is a, an empty column and you can see I've already deleted the username column from this particular format. So uh, this way, with it, out, with it organized by student name, I have already defined these as column heads, but I can show you what, what that means if you are not familiar um, and you want to insert, um, sorry, this name and then define this name which is a student, and you define it by the entire column, then that column is referenced by student name. And you can add that. And then if you want to add another one, and you want the date, and you define the date by column C, and then you add another, and you can have status. And this will keep those column heads um, firm, I guess is the best way to say it. They're now defined. So those are the, and you add that, you're okay. All right, so now they're defined as the firm title heads and I bolded them just to keep them in place. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to subtotal out every time Yulia has been in class. So we highlight column A and we go to our data and we select the subtotal value. And it, at each change in student name, so each time this field changes, student name changes, we are going to put a subtotal in that counts how many times that name has been present. We're going to replace the current subtotals. There aren't any in this, this spreadsheet just yet. And then we'll put a summary table that is at the bottom of all the data. Make sure the function that you're using is in fact the count function. You can average them, sum them, max them, minimum them, product them, and use most of the other functions that are available handily in uh, Excel. But you want to use the count function uh, if you use the other functions, then you're going to get some uh, odd data. And then when you hit OK, what you'll see is that uh, for the first time, perhaps in your use of Excel, you'll see the different levels and layers that are there. But um, Yulia's name now comes out. You can enlarge column A so you can see the full name. And she was present seven times between January 26th and February 15th. If you go to level two, it actually shows you a concise count from each one without all the data involved. And so very quickly, with a click of a button, you get an entire attendance report for your class 
and how many times that they have entered a pin uh, in in your course. And so if you're using this, if they need, are they required to attend 22 in a course in the semester, the quarter, whatever your numbers happen to be, you have a very quick way to do this. And at this point, if you are one of those people who likes to be even mathematically correct, you can add into any of the extra columns a, a formula that says, um, you know, you, you could equal the, um, you know, Julia had seven, so B9, um, and divide that by, you know, 22 or whatever your number happens to be. And so then, you know, she actually ends up with a 31%. So if you wanted it as percentage points, you, you could do it very easily and create that formula. And then, you know, you fill that down and you'll get all of your data to be in there completely the way it should be. Um, that's this, a control D fills down. So if you highlight where the formula is and then highlight the whole column and then it will highlight those with the same formula. And then if you click in there, it'll see, all right, so it's B11, uh, B117, excuse me, divided by 22. So the divider, divisor always becomes the same and it just fills that formula down for you. Uh, so then that's all done. So you could then have a num numeric value if you wanted if you really wanted to get fancy, you could format that cell numerically to see exactly what you wanted it to, to look like. You know, you don't need two decimal places on it, all right? Uh, well, that wouldn't work, but you could do it that way. You could convert it to percent if you so choose. Uh, you can go back to level one, which gives you a grand total of how many times your students have been in the class, and then level three gives you all of the data back again, and that E value comes in here. And you'll see that only the, the columns that have the formulas, well, yeah, otherwise you'll get a, a circular reference value. And uh, that's the easy way to, to pull your attendance roster. And you know, within you know, 30 seconds or so, you can easily have all of those scores done for your class. Uh, I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, we'll go ahead and end the sharing from this uh, screen. I'm gonna just quickly check this to make sure it's all good and clean. And uh, I hope that was helpful for you. Thanks.